Ni hao, it's just Stephanie. Okay, so here's the deal. I often film in this space, but I haven't actually showed you what this space is, I don't think. So I want to take you on a mini tour today of where I talk about language in my apartment. Now, for those of you not living in China or not living in Asia, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, this is going to look a little strange and I'll try to explain as I go. I actually love this. I hate drying my clothes. Yes, I'm talking about clothes in a language video because this is part of the context of making these videos and it's part of the context of living in China, which is heavily connected to learning the Chinese language. So if you don't, if you're not interested in the behind the scenes, go ahead. There's a ton more videos that you can look at, but I'm going to show you this anyway. Um, so anyway, so, okay, so anyway, uh, in a large part of Asia, you don't have, you'll have washing machines, and this is where it might get a little shaky. So here's our washing machine. It does, unlike a lot of the other ones um, available in China, even in Shanghai, we're in a first tier city, and even here, the majority of the washing machines uh, just wash, they don't dry. And I hate drying my clothes. It shrinks them. I'm kind of a big girl. I don't really want my clothes to shrink every time I dry them. And it leaves them stiffer also. So there's a bunch of reasons I just don't like drying my clothes in a dryer. I like hanging them. So for me, the hanging method that I'm going to show you that is used on a lot of Asia is actually really, really cool. So I'm going to take you on a panoramic view of this room. So there's one of the drying racks that we use. We also, what's really common is we have one of these guys too for emergency drying. And yes, I made sure that we didn't have any um, private underclothes up when I did this video. That's part of the reason why I haven't done this video before, even though I film in here is because I don't want you to see our stuff. <laughs> and since we got so far behind in laundry this week, there was nothing hanging up. I thought, hey, this is the perfect time to show them this space. I call this my recording studio, even though it usually has laundry in it. Uh, anyway, this is more of the traditional laundry rack and it's got two sides to it. And that's what most people use when they hang their stuff inside or outside. This laundry space that I'm in is, um, is if you can have an inside one like we do right now, like these are windows in here. You can have an inside one or you can have an outside one. And actually we have both now that I think about it. See that, those, that's actually another, that's another outside space that we can hang stuff on. But we're 13 floors up. Can you see people down there? That's the street, we're 13 floors up. And I'm super uncoordinated. And, um, and it rains a ton in Shanghai. So I hate hanging stuff outside. And let's be honest with the pollution, I'd rather have our air purified air drying my clothes inside than I would the stuff outside. Our last apartment, we only dried outside and the clothes were a bit weirder feeling. So we have the inside one. So, but because I like this space for recording, Da -da -da. <laughs> I, um, I specifically was looking for something like this here and actually you can't see what it turns into so I'm gonna t put this here like this so you can see so you hang your clothes from there and it's got that spot that that spot and down here it's got a whole bunch of different levels to it so we have two of those there's another one on the other side and then we've got a fan here because it's very moist in Shanghai and we don't, it, things don't always dry as quick as we need to. So I put a fan on it and it dries within a day. So that's the laundry situation. In the middle is my recording studio. It's just a floor. You're looking at a floor, right? So I just either sit down there or put a pillow there and put one of my tripods and I do that. This here behind this, um, I don't even know what the hell that's called. It's not really a curtain. I guess it's a curtain. Behind this is the bedroom. So this drying area is actually, let me do one final panoramic view. This drying area is actually part of the bedroom, which is out there. I'm not gonna show you the bedroom because hey, I have some privacy, okay? But as far as how big this room, this little drying area is, I'm standing at the window. I'm 5'4", so my arms are whatever proportionate length, and I can almost reach the curtains. So that's how wide this little area is. But did you see my view? I love city views. So that's what I love to, I'm either sitting down with this curtain behind me because I think that looks pretty or when I'm doing my podcast, honestly, I'm staring at the city view 
I put like two little makeshift shift desks and a, um, a, 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 a whatchamacallit, like a standing desk equivalent via box form, and I stare out the window as I'm talking. So I'm going to put you on pause and take you into the living room and show you the rest of my recording stuff. Okay, so we have left the uh, recording studio and come into the bedroom. For those of you that have seen a number of videos in the past couple of months since I moved into this apartment, you'll recognize that map of Shanghai, which my husband got me. It's so cool! And there's the couch that I do way, way too much studying and listening and, uh, and recording on. And then there's the desk. I also put a, a box on top of that desk, that desk, and stare out the window. I love cities. I love the energy of cities and I love looking out at cities. So I tend to do that a lot. Um, I do try to alternate too with that kind of yoga ball seat, but um, <laughs> my back's so messed up. So I tend to stand. I rotate locations. I either stand, sit on the ball, sit on the couch, move around, uh, go for a walk. That's why I do a lot of walking videos too. Well, I used to do more, but there's a whole other issue with that. But I have a bunch of tripods, and I, I think I've kind of shown you different ones as time goes on, but I don't think I've shown you them enough. So here's one that it actually gets pretty tall. This I can actually expand out when I have two arms to maneuver it so that it goes to um, my height so I can actually stand in front of it. I haven't used that one for a while, actually. I've got the standard octopusy one, right, the octopus one. I use that one a lot, and I actually put it on this ledge here, and then it, as I'm sitting on the yoga ball, it faces at a pretty decent angle. I've got a tiny one that I showed you guys when I bought that I bought in Spain last year, but that's stuck in the bedroom right now. I think that's it. Am I down to three tripods? I fail as a YouTuber. Fail. Um, that's weird. I thought I had more than that. I've, I think I've broken more tripods than I have um, presently. <laughs> that I have presently. So here is the mini one that I bought in Spain. This was the equivalent of a dollar. <laughs> like a dollar store in Spain. I forget the name of it, but it was on every, the name of the store was, it was, it was the kind of store that's on every street. And uh, at first I went into everyone because I liked buying stuff that was cheap and that I could throw out as I was traveling, if it broke or whatever, if I just needed stuff quickly. I know, I'm an awful consumer. I'm actually a good consumer when it comes to not having tons of stuff while I'm traveling. Anyway, this little guy was the equivalent of a dollar and I still have it. That was October slash November of last year, and I still have it. I tend to bring that one with me when I want to do a video um, outside of the apartment because it is the smallest one. I want to bring the octopus with me, but that thing is thick. It's thick. And I, did I mention I have like shoulder and back problems and that just doesn't work very well. So this in my bag that already has too much stuff doesn't really work very well. So I found that this tends to come with me uh, tends to stay in the apartment in the different rooms. Um, I'm also on this wall over here. I have a surprise coming next week. Uh, I'm going to start doing some different stuff with writing again, especially after I take the HSK2 test. I want to get back to writing. Writing the characters, I actually I have to put this down. I'm starting to play with it. <laughs> writing the characters is one of the reasons why I started studying the language again. The characters pulled me in and I've fallen off of writing them for a number of reasons and I have no regrets about that things learning comes and goes in different ways right but um but I want to get back to writing and I I found a few tools to help me do that and I'm so excited I can't wait for it to show up and I can't wait to show you but it's going to go on that wall I've already decided where it's going to go and how I'm going to use it and I can't wait to start and, and this morning I told my husband it was coming and to get ready for that part of the room to be a little more cluttered. Didn't ask, I told, because I'm really determined about this. No, if he would have said no, of course I would have not done it. But he doesn't because he's an awesome, awesome person. Thank you. Anyway, um, that's it. Oh, this is my language shelf. I've moved some of it. So here's my lightener box. There we go. Here's my lightener box, new flashcards. This is a, these are the current chapters of the book I'm working the HSK book I'm working on. These are all of my glasses. I found lots of different pairs of glasses when I was in the UK two months ago. We travel a lot for work. This is not all self-funded 
travel. Most of it isn't. Anyway, here's my bookshelf of different books and things. These are things that I was working on when I was exploring uh, different language learning uh, bits but I've now honed in on HSK for the whole year 2018, so I'm going to come back to some of these, some of the reading books and different um, etymology books for the, the writing, the orthography of the language and things like that. I want to come back to that after the HSK 2 or maybe even after HSK 3, but I'm not getting rid of them yet because they are awesome books. It was just a matter of timing, <gasps> much like with with a romance that wasn't meant to be at a particular time those books were just wow that's a really weird lighting okay those books were just not the right time for me but i have a feeling they're gonna come back and boom they're gonna be the right time because they they drew me in at the beginning and trust me there was a lot of material that didn't so i'm coming back to those and then i have my old hsk1 chapters all torn up and ready to be reviewed after i get hsk2 out of the way so that's that. That is, that, I'm looking around for anything that I missed, but that's it. That's the, um, like, where I film a lot of the videos now, how I film it, what I'm looking at when I film it, where I'm sitting, that kind of thing. So I hope you found this interesting. I don't do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I just tend to talk about language. But I saw a few of these recently online, and I thought they were by, by <coughs> other language learning folks. and. I was pretty impressed by the technical stuff that they were doing that I don't know if I will ever have the time to figure out. I can, I just don't have the pas the pa not the passion, the patience to figure out a lot of tech stuff. I just tend to do whatever is the easiest because I want to spend most of the time on language learning, not on producing things. <sighs> um, but that's just my own fault because I've spread myself too thin with all three of the projects I'm working on. Anyway. Um, but it was but it was really inspiring to watch these folks do these things, and I did find myself curious about the behind the scenes stuff on theirs. So I thought I would include you guys on some behind the scenes stuff on my production. I'm very, very low key on how I record stuff. I basically study until the point where I'm frustrated and then hit record and talk at you about <laughs> or talk to you, talk at you about what I've just encountered. And that's generally what happens. There are some slightly more researched videos, some of which I need to do continuations on, and those tend to get, not get done for months on end. And I do want to come back to those. But the vast majority of things are things that hit me and I just grab my phone and press record and get them documented for you as well as for future me, um, because all of this is gonna turn into something to help others uh, learn Chinese in the future. That's something, I'm not sure what that is anymore. I thought I knew when I started this channel, but it seems to be morphing and I'm just gonna go along with it. I'm just gonna follow the creativity wave and see where we end up. Ah, ah. I'm gonna let go of the result, right? I'm just gonna do the work, do the work, do the work. Um, that's it, that's how I record. The other reason I wanted to do this is that it's kind of interesting because with this channel, Actually, I'm going to put you on a tripod for a second. Okay, so what's happening is with this channel and my two podcasts, they're starting to gain more momentum. And so actual people are starting to contact me to do collabs, and uh, I'm getting in touch with people to do interviews in different ways and different things. And I really like talking to people about things that I'm interested in. I really like talking to people, period, but I really, really like talking to people about specific subjects that I'm interested in. And I've noticed the past week, I've spent more time trying to set up uh, interviews and collaborations than I have done language learning. And I need to put a slight pause on that because the language learning is the thing that motivates me to do the other stuff. And if I don't study and I don't progress, I have nothing to talk about and I'm, I'm damaging my own progress. So at this point, about a little after a year after starting all of my three projects, because believe it or not, they all started the same freaking week in April of last year. It was like a mind explosion. So about a year after that happened, a year and a month, exactly 13 months after that happened, um, I'm finding myself needing to remember to do the projects and include the people stuff. The thing is that podcasting is a very silent endeavor. It, it generally, not just for people who are just starting, but for people in general, for podcasts in general. It's not like YouTube where a lot of people comment all the time, even on, on popular channels that have thousands of subscribers. There's lots of comments. In podcasting, it's not like that. 
So it's kind of nice that I started YouTube with the podcast because there's been enough activity on YouTube for me to keep going with this medium to get my ideas onto this medium because you guys have been vocal and interesting and really encouraging. Whereas in the podcasting, I've really been talking to myself for about a year and now there's some communication coming through. So it's, it's very interesting that I, I want to gravitate towards talking to people, but if I don't do my own work, there's no point in talking to other people about it. So I need to make that balance. And it's the first time I've really had to have that dilemma. And I'm smiling right now because this is a freaking awesome dilemma. It's a really, really, really cool dilemma to go, oh, no, wait, I have to space out my, my collaborations and my communications with people about the things I'm super passionate about while I work on the things I'm super passionate about. So I have to remember to balance the two things that really energize me to live. I'm not kidding. These things feed my soul in a way that is very hard to describe. And so it's really, really cool to have to go, okay, pause. Let's, let's make sure that these are both happening. Not that I'm skewed on talking to people but not doing anything or doing lots of stuff but not talking to people because both of them it, keep me going in different ways. Um, and it's been very skewed in this direction where I've been working but not talking. Oh, YouTube is, has increased this a little bit, so more like this. And now it feels like it's going like this, but this week it went like that. And so I need to balance it a little bit more. And this is, this is quite possibly the most awesome dilemma ever. I'll have to get more organized as the projects all get, um, uh, get more popular, assuming that all three of them do. Um, I might have to take on additional folks to help me do some of the technical things that I can't stand doing, which, thank goodness for that. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's all long term. And I found myself a bit this week a little terrified of that because that's giving up some of my babies, these three babies that I had last year, not real babies, these projects. So there's a lot happening in my brain because I tend to be a short-term and long-term planner. Planning keeps me sane and I like to think about the future, especially when it comes to thinking about things that I like to do. Um, so I had a bit of a panic attack, not a panic attack, but a bit of a, <gasps> I'm going to have to get more organized and or get help in doing the projects that I like because if it ends up being really, if, if I end up getting very busy, uh, I need to get somebody to help me do these things um, and that's terrifying. <laughs> I hate delegating and things slow down a little bit when you involve other people and I'm sort of uh, a manic fast-paced person and that's very challenging for me but I realize at this point in my life I have learned a bit of patience thanks to learning coding a couple of years ago Again, thank you, Somia. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things going on at the same time. So what was the end of that sentence? So because my patience has, my ability to be patient has increased over the past few years, I think I can slow the hell down and see where this is going. And if it reaches a point where I need to get people to help me with the stuff that is not creative, that, um, that doesn't interfere with my creative process, that I can start to delegate that stuff aside. Actually... I think I've already started that with my podcast, now that I'm thinking about it, with my podcast, I've been using Fiverr for like different uh, image uh, reshaping and different logo stuff and different website uh, formatting and things like that. Like I've started to use Fiverr, F-I-V-R-R, -R. it's one of those freelance sites where you hire someone for a specific small task for, started out as $5, but they have additional stuff. And no, they don't sponsor me, nobody sponsors me, but... It's a really good service, and so instead of spending hours reshaping a photo to a specific uh, thing that iTunes wants it to be, I paid somebody $5 to reshape it within the day, and then iTunes just accepted it. So it was hours of frustration gone uh, for $5, which is really, really worth it. So I guess on some level I have already started to delegate some of these things, but I might have to do more in the future and I look forward to that and I look forward to more interviews and collaborations and studying I look forward to more studying especially after HSK 2 on June 10th when I get to slow the heck down and dive deeper into the stuff that I'm studying and go back and review the stuff that I rush through so it's the end of May now it's May I think 26th to 27th today I don't entirely know for sure it's, it's Saturday if that helps um, 
But I'm, it says basically June, and I'm really, really looking forward to June. I'm looking forward to the HSK2 test being over on the 10th, and I'm looking forward to everything that's coming in the rest of 2018. Um, so that's that. So this is kind of like part external reveal, revealing uh, my behind the scenes of where I video these videos, where I tape these videos, where I record these videos, and partly revealing my soul of, of creativity and frustration and patience and possibly what's coming up in the next few months. So cool, so cool. Um, yeah, so that's all. Thank you guys for following me along on this. I hope this has been interesting in some way, shape, or form. I can't really say I'll do more videos like this because my filming process isn't really gonna change. I'm, I'm very simplistic in how I get stuff out into the world. But um, if you have any other, if you have any questions or comments or you are a YouTuber or content creator of some kind and you have, um, you wanna share your experience, leave it down below. Leave your links to your projects down below. I'd love to check out your stuff. Thank you guys so much, Satyan.